Welcome back trainers, my name is Casto Perfect and as of today, June 21st, the mightiest Mark Emboar makes his return to the 7 star rate dancing Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And if you're anything like me, you probably didn't connect to the internet through the last 6 days allowing you to play the mightiest Mark Emboar over and over again. And as a result, I have been able to discover the top 5 best performing Pokemon to beat the mightiest Mark Emboar and as a bonus, how to even one hit KO Emboar in the process. So without any further delay, let's get started. All right, so at number five, we have my personal favorite, Rhyperior at level 100, Terra type set to ground, holding the Shell Bell item. Its moveset is going to be a little different to the moveset that I advise you guys to use before. So instead of Mud Slap, you want to use Breaking Swipe, Sword Stance, Earthquake, and instead of High Horse, you want to use Iron Fence. Now, this Pokemon's ability should be Solid Rock for that effective 20% discount on incoming super effective damage. Now, 252 on Defense and 252 on HP is the way to go. And as you can clearly see, Defense is up, Special Attack is down, indicating that this Pokemon has Infused Nature. Now, the sequence of moves, of course, is going to be showcased as soon as I um, stop talking about this breakdown. But the idea is three times breaking swipe to build your energy to, to terrestrialize then you want to set up with iron defense to make sure that you can tank whatever comes in and then you want to swords dance two times or maybe three times if you want to max out everything and then just earthquake for the life of you and then that's gg well played now let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration and see how effective this is So, pick number 4 is going to be Annihilate, probably one of the most used Pokemon in 7 star raid dance I've ever seen. Annihilate at level 100 with stereotyping set to Ghost, holding a Shell Bell item, Rain Dance, Rage Fist, Drain Punch, and Bell Cup as its moveset. Its ability doesn't matter because neither of the two abilities that Annihilate has get activated in this raid. You want to invest 252 EVs in defense and 252 EVs in HP, the remaining ones of course in attack. 
and then you can clearly see that the fence is up special attack is down indicating that this pokemon's nature is actually impish the whole premise around annihilate is that it sets up the rain to make sure that the flare blitz doesn't hit you too hard meanwhile you want to drain punch as many times as you possibly can to stay healthy and whenever you are within a very healthy uh hp range you want to set up the bell cup and then after a while after Embor terrestrializes drain punch is absolutely useless you want to continue to use rage fist and terrestrialize as well to do as much damage as you possibly can meanwhile whenever you get the chance to uh, bulk up again you bulk up your rage fist you bulk up your rage fist and whenever the rain stops you set up the rain again to make sure that the flare blitz does not become the priority move that Ambor uses and you continue to do that until the end and you're going to win Pick number 3 is obviously going to be Great Tusk here at level 100, Terror type set to ground, holding the Shell Bell item and a very straightforward moveset, Mudslap, Earthquake and Bulk Up. Its ability is Protosynthesis, forget about that, you do not wish to activate that because if you set up the sun and you think hey this is great because I get an attack boost, you are in turn making Ambor's Flare Blitz a lot more powerful, that you definitely will not be able to deal with that. So 252 EFs, investment in defense and attack. Plus defense, minus special attack, indicating infish nature. And the whole premise of this build is you start off with one bell cup to get a plus one defense, which is essential to make Great Tusk work for you. Then you want to go for Earthquake to recover that lost HP from the initial Flare Blitz. And then you want to weave in some Mud Slab whenever possible. And uh, once your stat changes are nullified at around turn three or four, you need to look at your HP bar. If it's high enough, then that's great. You can terrestrialize, bulk up. 
if it's low enough uh, and with low enough I mean below 50% you definitely want to terrestrialize and go for the earthquake to regain some HP to the point where you're always above 50% HP because one critical hit and you're off the game weaving block ups and earthquake whenever you can and that's basically it just make sure that you're at all times above 50% and if you want to use some heal ups some cheer ups it's all up to you you need to take a uh, a closer look at the opportunity that presents itself whenever using this Pokemon and I'm pretty sure you will be successful. Now let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration. For pick number 2 we have Swampert at level 100 with its stereotyping set to ground holding the Shell Bell item, its moveset is Chilling Water, Screech, Bulk Up and Earthquake, its ability doesn't matter, you don't even have to look at it, it's all good, 252 EVs investment in defense and attack, as you can clearly see attack is up, speed is down, indicating this is a relaxed nature Swampert. Now of course you can swap this for Inkfish, but at the same time I'm thinking the base speed stats of Swampert is lower than Embor, so regardless of what you do you're always going to be slower anyway. So the sequence of moves is actually very straightforward. You want to start off the battle with 3 times Chili Water. That way you drop Embor's attack stats by 3 stages 
and in return you are able to terrestrialize now do you want to terrestrialize immediately absolutely not you want to keep your water typing because that stops Embor from going for flare blitz if you're healthy enough go for a bulk up go for a second bulk up or maybe a third bulk up depending on how much hp you have left and whenever you feel like you are in danger zone which is about around 40 percent hp you want to terrestrialize and go for the earthquake because by this time he would have already uh, nullified your stat changes and he would already have his uh, shield up so without you terrestrializing your earthquake is not going to do any damage whatsoever so after you terrestrialize you do your earthquake you recover some hp you become healthy enough to the point where you're above let's say 50 percent hp you can again proceed to weave in some bulk ups and at the end of the battle where Ember's shield is broken and you are hopefully at plus six bulk up then you want to at least try once one screech and then go for the earthquake and finish off the battle if the screech misses do not worry don't try it again just earthquake for the win and that's basically it so let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration so you see it in action And so we come to the final pick and the number one pick to be able to one hit KO Embor effectively constantly without failure, none other than Amaruch at level 100 with its stereotyping set to Psychic holding the Shield Bell item. Its moveset is Acid Spray, Calm Mind, Iron Defense and Stored Power. Its ability has to be Flash Fire. I repeat, its ability has to be Flash Fire. Without this, you're not going to be successful. Flash fire ability allows Armourouge to completely nullify all damage 
from the Flare Blitz that Embor dishes out, which by the way is also a stab move. It's very powerful. We don't have to deal with that at all. So if you want to invest 252 EVs in defense and 252 in HP, as you can clearly see, defense is up, attack is down, indicating that this Pokemon's nature is bold. The whole premise of this moveset, again, uh, revolves around being able to set up everything, right? And at the very end, one store power and GG well play. Now, how do we do that? We want to start off the battle by using Iron Defense once. Once you have that set up, obviously, Embor is going to go for the head smash. Hopefully, he misses, or he, if he doesn't miss, that's completely okay. You want to go for Acid Spray three times, okay? If you are in the danger zone because those head smashes are really hurting, then you have two choices. You can either heal up, right, with a cheer up, or you have to make sure that one of the NPCs you're playing with is Gardevoir, because Gardevoir uses Live Dew and it allows you to recover HP while you're setting up. All right, so after three acid spray, you need to terrestrialize as soon as you possibly can. And once you terrestrialize, you want to set up another iron defense. Actually, you want to max out your iron defenses, right? So you want to do that three times for a maximum of plus six defense. Uh, again, if you're in a pickle and your HP is low, those cheer ups are there to help you or the NPC guard of war. OK, if you have that in place, then you want to move around and change the move to go for Calmine plus six Calmine. So at this point, you have plus six defense, plus six special defense plus six special attack and then just the icing on the cake you want to go for a cheer up go all out and after that it's gg will play okay so if you want to see this in action let's go ahead and jump into the demonstration and <laughs> this is amazing i love this set man let's go
if you like this video and you thought it was helpful make sure to help me out by clicking the like button subscribing to my youtube channel for more content like this till the next time